There's a light. Uh, it's a light. <coughs> Morning, folks. Just get you up on the big screen. Morning, Joe. Morning, Barbara. Morning, Lenny. Morning, Ian. Grace, Paul. Morning, James. Morning, Gordon. Bay. Well, climbing nicely. We're getting there, folks. Morning, John. Morning, Robert. Ewan. Morning, Gina. Morning, Charlotte. Morning, Mr. McGoran. Morning, Doug. Morning, Davy. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah. The Madam Director sitting around the corner and writing comments on the bloody screen. Huh? What do you make of that, folks? Right, we're nearly there. What have we got? 95, 96. <coughs> Couple more, we'll get this broadcast underway. Morning, Marty. Morning, Colin. Right, that's us up over the 100 mark. So let's get his broadcast underway. It's Indy Truck Davey in the house, in his office in Salisbury, where it is overcast and 10 degrees. So that's the weather forecast for Salisbury and North Lanarkshire. So you might know what the weather's like, but you are. Look out your own bloody windy. Okay, right, we'll start today with the latest COVID figures for Friday. Um, and then we'll move on to get right into the view of the weekend's news. Okay. Anyway, the latest COVID figures which were issued Friday, there were 3,098 new COVID patients, uh, new people tested positive for COVID. There was 1,702 people in hospital, of which 25 were in the intensive care. Okay, and 28 deaths were recorded uh, from Thursday to Friday as COVID, with COVID as a contributing factor in deaths. All right, national records for Scotland tell us that the daily test, uh, death toll um, for the last reporting period was um, 17.1 people, whereas the previous reporting uh, period, the 10th of April, it was 22 people today. So it has gone the right direction. The amount of cases are coming down, and the daily death toll is also coming down, which is a good thing, all right? Now, the Office for National Statistics tell it was on Friday that uh, 1 in 19 people in Scotland are now uh, um, carriers of covid and that's down for 1 in 17 in the previous week, right? So 5.4% of the population have the virus at this point in time. 72.5% of the Scottish population have had three doses of the vaccine. Over 90% have had a dose of the vaccine, all right? So let's move on. Friday started with one main theme in the rags. Bojo to face, um, to face inquiry into whether he misled Parliament and broke the ministerial code, right? Labour eh, um, put the motion before Parliament and eh, it passed with consensus, meaning even Bojo's own MPs think there should be an inquiry into whether he broke the ministerial code and misled Parliament. All right. The calls for Bojo the Clown, um, eh, the criminal prime minister, to go were quite vocal in the debate, actually, for all sides of the chambers. And it looks as if over the weekend the Tories are starting to have a right look at this and well, I don't think Bojo's got long left in office. Okie dokie. Right. So, but as we know, Bojo told uh, the um, press on the delegation to India, we have had no intention of resigning under any circumstances. So if Bojo's going to go, it's going to have to be his MPs to get rid of him, all right? Right, and Friday, Bojo was in India to um, beg for IT workers because we can't get them to Europe anymore because we've left the EU. Now, in the deal, there will be an expansion of the type of immigration permitted from India. That's going to really suit the xenophobic nut jobs down there that voted for Brexit. Eh? No white Europeans, but plenty of brown Indians. That's not going to go down well with them, is it? Unbelievable. We'll probably get here and end up getting deported to Rwanda. <laughs> Hey. Anyway, so Bojo's out there avoiding party gate, right? Now, the Financial Times is reporting that the um, 
Eh, it would be, um, the deal with India would allow Westminster to bring in even more people and it would be um, a freedom of movement between India and um, the UK. Can I see that going down well down that road either? Alright. But eh, uh, the other thing that's been reported on Friday while Bojo's hour in uh, India is that he intends to refocus his attention when he gets back on Brexit and he cites the NI protocols as uh, needing sorted. So Bojo's back on Brexit because he feels it's safe ground for him, alright? Now, Bojo, say, um, Bojo says he's going to introduce a law which will allow ministers to overturn um, Article 16 or to intervene and push Article 16 or the NI protocols to one side whenever it bloody well suits him, right? But it doesn't go doing well in Northern Ireland because there's an election coming up in a couple of weeks' time, alright? Doogie B, a leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, said he did not trust Bojo and questioned the time in two weeks from a storm on assembly election, right? Sinn Féin's Conor Murphy said the UK government had been a... Um, making policies to suit them bloody selves and that they would break treaties to suit them bloody selves. And what uh, um, Conor Murphy means is the Good Friday Agreement and the Brexit Trade Withdrawal Agreement, uh, the Brexit uh, Trade Agreement as well. All right. Now, Social, uh, um, Social Democrat and Labour leader Colin Eastwood said the same, um, the same old story, uh, the same old story from Bojo the Clown, and that he didn't uh, care. One jot for the people of Northern Ireland. He only cared about protecting himself. And Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. The leader of DUP said he'd believe it when the legislation made it into the uh, Commons for debate. So basically, Bojo's banging his drum about Brexit to try and take um, more attention away from party great and try and refocus his premiership. But Brexit's done. There's just a wee bit left of the increments to go, and they'll all be dealt with by the end of the year. Although it has been rumoured that Bojo intends to kick it down the line again. So... Um, the next increment of a, um, a checks and, uh, and border a controls is meant to go in place in July, but it looks as if Bojo's looking to get another year extension out of the EU. Uh, he's probably going to play the Ukraine card in order to achieve it. Okie dokie, but the people in Northern Ireland, that, we've said this repeatedly, that the, the protocol is popular in Northern Ireland. The Northern Irish economy is growing, while the rest of our economies are being... Um, Vandalised deliberately by the Tories because of Brexit. Simple as that. Okay, moving on Friday. Back here in Scotland. And the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon launches the SNP manifesto for the local elections. She pledges that S SNP councillors will help families and communities with the cost of living crisis. And she says to date with the same sort of um, intensity that, they did, that, that was a, delivered during the pandemic. You know, she'll go at it the same way as they went when it the pandemic. She also reiterates her intention to hold an independence referendum in 2023, the tail end of 2023. And the, um, the SNP leader doing that road, um, Ian Blackford, he also um, reiterates on television, um, the Sophie Ridgett show, I think it was, that they intend to hold that referendum next year. And it looks as if it's definitely going to happen. Westminster's not going to stand the way. Which um, which gets even funnier on Saturday. I'm not going to wait until to to get the Saturday section to get into this. Mr McCaskill, who walked uh, the floor from the SNP after being released, uh, uh, elected as an SNP MP, he tells the right wing one of rags that any, opinion, uh, any um, referendum held in Scotland without Westminster's approval would be nothing more than an opinion poll. A big opinion poll. I've got news for Mr McCaskill. That's what referendums are. Massive bloody opinion polls. And if we hold a referendum under any circumstance, it'll stone. And if Mr McCaskill would like to have a debate with me on why, I'm quite happy to debate with him on it. Especially as the UN and the international communities tell us we can hold a referendum under the international law and it would be internationally recognised. So where McCaskill's coming from, I've got absolutely no idea. 
But I guess um, there's a few people in the Alpha party who have been shouting that this referendum's not going to happen. And they might be getting a wee nervous, but we've been nervous it is going to happen. You know, but I don't want to criticise the Alpha party, I'm criticising Mr McCasco himself. Now since Mr McCasco walked the floor and joined the Alpha party, first they wanted Devo Max as a stepping stone to independence. We know that won't fly. I did a video on it at the time actually. And now he's telling us where opinions don't count unless Westminster tell us where opinions they could. Wow. Brilliant. Right, anyway, let's move on. So Friday, that was it. First, first Minister launches the SNP manifesto for the local election. And she does pledge to help people with cost of living crisis. But Uti, all the parties, I've said this, there's only two who can actually make a pledge to help with the cost of living crisis. We've got the Labour Party, the Lib Dems, we've got Alpa, and we've got the Tories all saying in their manifestos what they would do for the cost of living crisis when they have no power to deal with the cost of living crisis. Most of them are offering to cut energy prices. Energy policies reserved to bloody Westminster. I, I really, you know yourself folks, I'm getting really annoyed with this caper. These are council elections. Keep it straight in your head folks. You're voting for local representatives to run your schools to run your community services, to run your community centres, to run your sports facilities, to fix the potholes in your street, to empty your bins. You're no elected people who can fix the cost of living crisis. But the only people who can actually, there's only two parties could say that they could help with the cost of living crisis in these council elections, and that's the SNP and the Greens, because they're actually in central government here in Scotland. The rest of them are no and have no power to do anything about the cost of living crisis. Bear that in mind when, you, when they're at your door with their stupid leaflets promising to double the child, um, a, the child payment for 20 quid to 40 quid or telling you they're going to reduce your electricity costs by half because they just don't have the power to do it. It's a bloody outrage that misleading the electorate seems to be, have become the bloody norm here. Is this the Bojo effect? Bouncing up here into Scotland? Wow. I thought dishonesty in politics. Say that right enough. You know, it's three cuckoos in the nest. You know, and one a so-called um, believer in independence party. But, you know, you expect the dishonesty for the cuckoos in the nest. We expect people who are standing on our side for the independence uh, side to be bloody well honest with the electorate. Wow. Right. Um, so, anyway, it would appear that this bloody election, this uh, referendum is going to go ahead in 2023. It doesn't look as if they're going to stop them. That gets more interesting when we get to Sunday, actually. Right, so, let's move on to Saturday, because that's what we all want to see. I mean, you know I'm only picking a couple of, a couple of subjects at the PhD day or weekend. Right. Saturday started with a mixed bag in the rags. All right. Scotland legend and ex-Rangers goalkeeper Andy Gorham's got cancer. Uh, Boris says he will uh, send UK tanks to Ukraine, but he doesn't mean with drivers on it, he just means sending the tanks. Funny how there's plenty of money for munitions, but people are bloody well starving and can't afford their bloody electricity bills, their mortgages, their rent, food, you know, and yet there's plenty of money for fucking tanks. We'll get a wee bit merry that as we get further in and all, right? Hey. Uh, and uh, it's also reported in the papers that France and Germany have evaded the 2014 embargo on selling arms to Russia. And apparently since 2014, uh, France and Germany have sold 230 million quid's worth of arms to Russia. I wonder what the figure is for the UK arms uh, um, companies. Right. Um, and uh, also in the papers, PM faces new party gate fine as a... Uh, he tries to shift focus back on the Brexit and it's been reported that he could be facing a £10,000 fine for organising and holding a party in the number 10 flat. So, him and Carrie might be able to get slapped with another big fine. Alright. And uh, the Herald comes up with a, um, a, a, a really out, out left, a uh, right field, really misleading headline. On, in the papers on Saturday. The Herald says that Scotland could be to have its sick man of Europe tag put back on. 
well, Scotland's going to be tagged the second, second man in Europe. We would expect a Welsh and English ought to be fecking deep DNA because we've got the best NHS on these islands. Wow, the Herald was way out there. Looks like they're making up SMP and Scottish bad stories, but we know that. You know, the press is on outside Scotland and they think we're some sort of idiotic inferior race. And if the peer Mr McCaskill was backing that up and saying, we can't indeed bugger all without Westminster's permission. Or a spanner. Right, and the National goes we Fresh India Ref 2 pledge in 2023 for the First Minister. All right, moving on Saturday. And the Energy Voice uh, .com reports that BPT um, press ahead with the new Marloch uh, um, oil and gas field and what they're calling the UK's North Sea. No for much longer it will be. It's Scotland's it's continental shelf, it's Scotland's territorial waters. No the bloody UK's. Anyway, I'm surprised this story actually made it out. The reason why I'm telling you about it is because for some reason, every time the word independence is mentioned, but Scotland's oil and gas reserves seem to bloody well shrink. But here we have the BPP going to open a big new oil and gas field. And when we come to the next referendum next year, the UK won't be able to tell us the oil's running out. Why? Because they issued their energy strategy two weeks ago. And bang smack at the heart of it is Scottish renewables and Scotland's oil and gas. We had Sunak on the telly telling us the energy future for the UK was in Scotland's North Sea and the renewables. Meaning Scotland's renewables. So we don't need to worry about the hey, what you going to do, your oil and gas is running out question next time round. Because it obviously isn't it. Because if there's enough of it to power the whole of the bloody UK, then there's definitely enough of it to power Scotland. Right, moving on, Saturday. An attempt to distract from his woes, Bojo. Um... As I say, he pledges mere uh, weapons again to the Ukraine, right? He's going to send 120 armoured vehicles, including tanks. He's also going to send the Javelin anti-tank weapon system. And uh, they'll also be ser ser uh, sending the Star Streak anti-tank weapon system, as well as the Star Streak surface-to-air missiles. It's an awful lot of money's worth. I'm assuming that the Ukrainians know that they'll be a price to pay for all this aid they're getting. Because that's generally how it works. You know? Generally, um, the people in Westminster and, and Washington and things like that, they don't give this stuff away with the kindness of their hearts. And the arms manufacturers who are making this stuff need paid. So, the Ukrainians are going to have a fucking big bill at the end of it to deal with all this. But anyway, as I say, Bojo's trying to distract, so he's sending their uh, mere weapons to Ukraine. It's going to cost the Ukrainians in the meantime, but the magic money tree is working for arms while we're in. People go hungry and can't afford to heat their hoosies and they pay their bills. All right. Okay, moving on Saturday. Uh, uh, Boj was back from India where um, he told to complete a comprehensive trade deal by October. But the Indian Finance Minister, Mar uh, Mirmala, a eh, Sadaranman, a eh, pulls cold water, water on the whole thing, and what she tells the Reuters news agency is that she would like to be friends with the West, but they require Russia to be able to secure their borders. So there you go. India doesn't trust Westminster. India doesn't trust the West, and India's getting whacks of cheap oil and gas for Russia at this point in time. And as I say, the finance minister er, in India tells tells the World Press Association and Reuters that a eh, they require Russia to be able to secure their borders. But there's no surprise in that, folks, because you've got to remember going forward, the BRIC nations will be at the forefront of the world economy. And for those of you who don't know what the BRIC nations are, it's Brazil, Russia, India and China. You've got to remember the West has slipped out very, very quickly going backwards because our economies are peaked and may have what we need, whereas these economies are still growing and will continue to grow for many years to come. And the BRIC nations will become the richest and the biggest economies in the world, while places like the UK and America, as we know, are slipping backwards towards third world status. And as we slip backwards towards third world status, 
We have the big corporations raping us on the way out. We have rampant profiteering, and that's what we're seeing in the energy markets. And what we're seeing in the energy markets are always because oil and gas days are, days are number. Even though we've got plenty of it, the world has to move to the renewables. So the oil and gas companies are gouging as much out of the oil and gas as they can before they transition into providing us all with green energy as well. Okay, dokie, right, moving on. Saturday, and the latest retail sales figures are out um, for March. And the uh, footfall on the high street drops by 1.4%. It's the biggest drop in 20 years. Okay. Now, we've spoken about this. We misses my grandfather's name money to spend on the high street then. The economy goes into contraction because we have a consumer-led market economy. And if the consumers don't have money in their pockets, then the economy doesn't they bloody work because you've no money to spend into the economy. So what we're seeing is a contraction on the high street which will lead to a contraction right across, right across industry. You know, if we Mrs. McGumford's no buying a sofa, you don't need somebody to make one. If we Mrs. McGumford's no buying a carpet, you don't need somebody to make a bloody carpet. That stuff isn't rocket science. There is wanting destruction of the economy going on. But any of you out there that have read a uh, Dominic Cummins, um, a uh, Ravens, you'll know that the plan is to deconstruct the economy as it is here in, here in the UK and rebuild the UK as a vast military industrial complex. That's what these bloody free ports are all about. Apart from gouging mere money out of the exchequer, because these places don't pay fucking taxes. All right, right, let's move on to Sunday, because I've only got a short period of time I've got to take say work, all right? So Sunday, um, here in Scotland, started with a mixed bag in the rags. Scotland on Sunday tells people um, it tells us that people are waiting up to four days in A and E. It's bollocks, of course. I read last week. I last read the figures out last week. You know, sixty-six point two percent are being seen in the four hours. Two thousand seven hundred and seventy odd people waited eight hours, and nine hundred and seventy-seven waited twelve hours. Let's see, it's about four days in it. Wow. But of course, you know, with the press being on down South Scotland, I've already said this, they treat us like bloody mushrooms, keep us in the dark, and they think we're a stupid inferior race. They think we don't have bloody search engines. Wow. Right, um, the Herald, the Herald on Sunday, um, tells us uh, we face a postcode lottery for electricity costs as uh, new plan from a uh, uh, Westminster goes into place. But basically they're telling us the further north you get there, it's going to cost you. Simple as that. You know, if you're living in the central belt, your bills are your, be, your bills will be a wee bit cheaper if you're in Aberdeen or Inverness or, or anywhere else out there in rural Scotland. You know, so and uh, the only right wing rags a uh, the mail says Sturgeon lavishes millions on the a uh, uh, millions more to split the UK. If, Sturgeon, if, if the First Minister wants to spend our tax money and writing up a prospectus to put in front of our people for independence, what the fuck's it going to do with an English rag with the mail? Anyway, what the, what the mail saying is that uh, Sturgeon's wasted millions getting ready for India Rev 2. Right. I didn't see anything in the mail about 37 billion quid getting pissed up against the wall down that road for tracking trees. 140 mil billion being written off to dodgy Covid loans and 10 billion being up, going up in smoke on dodgy PPE. Yeah, if Miss Sturgeon spends a couple of million telling civil servants, civil servants to put a prospectus together to put in front of the Scottish people, she's a bad one. Wow. Right, and the... Uh, what else we got? Hey. Now, the other lonely rag in Scotland, um, the Express, where it says Bojo the Clown is the right leader for Britain at this time. What? I wouldn't let Bojo run me a bath, never mind to run a bloody country. Wow! Huh. Really is time to get rid of these nuts in the press. Really is. The fact that the press is owned and run outside Scotland are bloody disgraced to starving. 
Uh, the fact that we don't have Wayne broadcaster and no allowed to talk to ourselves tells you something about whether this is a union or whether we're a captive or a colony. Jeez, oh, right. Right, moving on. Sunday, you can hear in Scotland, Annas, the, uh, Annas, the arse poverty by Sarwa, is getting trounced in the papers by uh, a trounced in the national for no coming in in line and falling behind democracy. All the cuckoos in the nest are anti democratic, right enough. So they are. But Sarwa's getting it tight because the trade unions, the STUC, comes out and says, yep, people have voted for a referendum, they have to have one. And of course, if Sarwa wants to revive Labour in Scotland, he's going to have to get off this anti democratic stance and leave that anti democratic stance to the other arse of the establishment cheek, the Blue Tories. So Sarwa's getting trounced. The other thing comes out on Sunday as this Queen's biographer tells us that the Queen doesn't really care if Scotland becomes independent or no, no thank her. She'll sign off on it apparently. As if we care. But there'll be a deal done. The monarchy will probably be kicking about. But the deal will be that we don't have a vote or, or a referendum and we'll get rid of the monarchy for X amount of years. But you know what? The monarchy's the least of our bloody problems. It only, take, it only costs us 10.6 million quid a year to keep the Queen as head of state or her family as head of state. What would it cost for a president? Presidential policies and all that sort of thing. So, you know, I don't really matter. The, the monarchy thing and the head of state thing doesn't bother me. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the Queen's a, the Queen's a cheap head of state and she keeps her nose out of her businesses. You know, it doesn't bother us. We don't bother her either. You know, it's not like doing that road with the street parties and all that every time there's a royal brat born or something like that. We just go on with it. You know, we're not really interested. Maybe Morningside will have a wee, a wee party. But Morningside's full of, uh, of ex-part English people, so... But, you know, moving on. Sunday, doing that road, and Sir Comrade Starmer, the Red Tory leader on the second cheek of the same arse of the establishment, has trotted out around the TV studio, uh, studios to tell us that there has to be, or there should be, an emergency budget to tackle the cost of living crisis. Spanner. The House of Thieves and Carpetbag has created a bloody cost of living crisis, and he's the other cheek of the same arse. Wow. He's just as culpable for Brexit as the rest of them. So he is. Starmer also tells us that Corbyn's not getting back into the Labour Party under any circumstances, especially after his remarks at the weekend saying that NATO should be broken up in the interest of security. Alright. And I have to agree with Corbyn on this one. NATO's become um, become more than defensive. Let's put it that way. It's been expanding and expanding and expanding. You know, it's just become as dangerous as some of the nut jobs out there. So Corbyn's no getting back in to the Labour Party, all right? Right, Sunday did that road, uh, and uh, Tories, uh, the Tories come away with that, well, what, the Times, I think it was the Times that come away with um, the Sharon Stone and Angela Rayner story, the basic instinct story, if you don't know if you've seen the film. Anyway, some anonymous Tories told the paper that Angela Rayner was trying to put Bojo off by crossing and uncrossing her legs like in the, the movie Basic and uh, Basic Instincts, uh, uh, the Sharon, famous Sharon Stone uh, scene where she crosses and uncrosses her legs and she's not getting any knickers on. But apparently Angela Rayner's doing it with a clay zone. <laughs> to be fair, Bojo comes straight to her defence and he says, what a lot of crap. Bojo gets something right for a change. But the mere fact that this sort of piss is battering about in the 20th, you know, in the 21st century, you just, you just couldn't make it up. You just couldn't. You know, unbelievable misogynism for the papers and people doing that road. I mean, I might be, I might come across as misogynist sometimes, I suppose, um, with things like meeting two veg and things like sayings that we, we grew up with and I shouldn't really use anymore. But, you know, that's just kicking the head. A bit hooky, right? With it. If they're going to go that far to create a distraction for their own party leader, wow. Anyway, Bojo, Bojo bounces it, right? And hey, the other thing doing that road is that hey, leading Tories are um, 
saying that they have to get rid of Bojo. They can't wait. They need to get. But it looks like a lot of them are going to hang out to after the May election and see how, how it goes. Um, I don't know if the Tories are going to take the towns and everybody thinks they're going to take. Labour's only six or seven points clear in the polls. Labour's not exactly doing fantastic here, folks. So will the two Tories take a right trouncing in that uh, in the local elections? Probably here in Scotland. Whether they're whether they're doing England or not, I have no idea. Really don't know. Really don't know. Hey, also Sunday, um, French President Macron is re-elected for a second term, and the whole of Europe collectively have a huge sigh of relief. Because I don't know, uh, uh, Marie Le Pen's a right winger. No, a Tory. Worse. You know, an extreme right winger. And uh, she's, no, she's no Europe's biggest fan. Although after looking at the experience of the UK and Brexit, Le Pen's stance on Europe has changed a wee bit. But, as I say, the French didn't vote, but didn't vote for her. So, as I say, Europe sighs a big sigh of relief. All right. Okay, where were we? And they also Sunday, the Guardian reports Tories are getting ready to ditch Bodo. Just covered that. Um, oh, aye, and a Sunday. The other thing that Starmer tells us is the Labour will close the non dom tax loophole if they win the, the UK general election in 24. And finally, for Sunday, the UN, the US says that a Russia are a uh, brutalising the Ukraine, but are losing the war. And I have to say, looking at the, the, the press across Europe, I don't see where the UK, I don't see where the US is getting that impression from. You know? And if Putin really says his mind to it, I've said this, Putin says his mind to it, he can try to close the Ukraine in the time. Right. So let's move on to the small and see what the small is right. I'm going to see, see, time's moving on. Okay. We'll get the papers up. Right, Scotland's papers cover the cost of living crisis and Macron wins second term. Alright, so the daily record has cost of living crisis. Half of Brits can't afford their bills. Five million are forced to choose heating over eating. Five million, I made half of the UK population about 30, 32 and a bit million. Not quite a, that's not quite half, is it? Five million. The only rag that the, the Daily Express has Pensioners face cost of living gear from hell. I we know. And it's deliberate. There's a cull on. I'm fed up saying there's a cull on. It's the same at all when I say COVID's finished, pish. It's no. I might have told you there was 28 people died here on Friday. Thursday and Friday across the UK, 647 people died of COVID. COVID's never near done with us. What we have to worry about is mere variants. But it is the same. The Looney Rag the Express are saying reports of you grim reality for millions as inflation set to hit 10% and the cost of living crisis is killing your granny, all right? The Scotsman has. Macron wins second term as Le Pen concedes defeat. The Times has. Macron wins, uh, Macron vows to uh, reunite France after election win. Um, the Daily Telegraph has. I, I owe you, Macron promises uh, French. He says he owes them. Um, and apparently Putin will manipulate UN chief's visit to Moscow, warns Johnson. And PM tells Rainer Sexist claims were not his. Right, and the Herald has Sturgeon in London talks to plug 31 billion gap in home energy plan. She'll not get anywhere, but, you know, she's going to try. And the Metro has Putin's tiniest victim, three-month-old Kira dies alongside her mother and her gran. So apparently a young mother, a, a, a baby, a young mother and a gran is by the latest victims and uh, the war out there. Civilians die in war, folks. It's no pretty. Scottish Daily Fail has HRT crisis putting women's lives in danger. Now I'm not going to laugh about this one because this is the start of the medical shortages we were talking about a couple of years back. Right? I don't know if you know this, uh, folks, but um, by the end of this year, we'll go to the, UA, uh, the, the EU um, Medical Association's um, deals. And we're going to have problems with drugs that we don't actually produce here. 
things like insulin or a atoms to deal with cancer, radiology. But, you know, and apparently we're already run to HRT. And according to the loony rag, the fail, it's putting women's lives in danger because they've been some women have been known to take their own lives because of the effects of the menopause. So I say, I'm not going to make light of that one. The eye has Tory rebels joined forces to oust PM. I say, I don't think Bojo's got long to go. The National has robbed of at least 1.7 billion by the Tories. PM to pledge that SNP councils in the North East will put right, uh, sorry, FM. To pledge that SNP councillors in the North East will put right more than a decade of toxic Tory cuts and disregard. Alright. We don't deal with that. Rag. We'll let that one pass by. And what is the star go today? What's the star go in the middle of the crisis that's going on? The star has women loudest. Um, snore blimey. So according to the star's boffins, uh, women snore louder than men. I think I could actually... There might be something in that, actually. There might actually be something in that. Though my, Madam Director's telling me to keep my gob shut. <laughs> so, that's a quick round-up of the weekend for you folks. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found it informative. All right? Um, but we'll be back more, of course, today or again. I don't know whether I'll be in a truck or whether I'll be in the house, but it says the economy slows down. There's less moving around which means contract drivers like Davy here has got less to shift and will have less work. Okie dokie. Anyway, you lot have a... Oh, wait a minute. Eh, the usual stuff. This is where everybody starts pissing off, right? When it comes to eh, the question of Scottish independence, partisan politics in your pockets and get out there and win hearts and minds, as I say, it being reaffirmed again that the referendum is going to happen and it will. There is no force on earth can stop it. Right, eh... Support the independent media, all right? Support uh, things like Broadcasting Scotland, Independence Live, Caledon Media, um, uh, the YouTubers out there. Uh, David and I have just ventured into YouTube, as you know, with the two Davies. Stephen Kelly's got a cover. Um, uh, YouTube um, channels. And, of course, there's a um, pure Maximilian uh, rope spear. There's a Robert Tooth to Power. There's Phil at a different bias. These guys all do great work. And we've got many vloggers and bloggers here like Leslie Riddock and the wee Ginger Doug and Bayman. They all do great stuff. All right, so if I've got a crowdfunder gone, you can afford to stick a couple of pence in the pot, please do. Health messaging. Keep wearing the face mask. COVID's not done. Clean your hands and surfaces regularly. All right, when it comes to social distancing, use your nabber. Say, if I'm asymptomatic, how is it going to affect the people around about me? And uh, although free tests are finished, just keep testing if you can. Alright, now have a nice day and we'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye then.